Hello Canadian gardeners, cold climate gardeners, and gardeners of the extremes. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, we take that science and we apply it to all things gardening and plant care. So if you like the sounds up, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and join our awesome crew. I post new videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, range from house plants all the way to gardening outside, all based in science, which is the cool part of this channel. So if you like the sounds of that, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. I do have a quick announcement to make. If you wanted to find the podcast connected to the land on any podcasting streaming service, please do. I actually recently just did a podcast with them talking all about soil science and gardening and you name it, it was talked about. It's nearly an hour long and it's done with Ian, who is a singer songwriter from Canada, um, and it is sponsored by PB Mart. So, if you guys want to check that out, that would be really, really awesome. Um, it's my first podcast ever. I really enjoyed it. I couldn't shut up. Surprise there. And yeah, if you could show your support for me, that would be really, really cool. Today's video. We are going to be talking about downy mildew and I'm so excited to talk about this because it is very common and I think a lot of people actually mistake it for overwatering, um, especially when it comes to basil specifically. Um, I have personally had it and I've even thought it has been overwatering, but it, it has always been downy mildew as the culprit. and. We can say thank you to Sherry in the comments for this because if you guys don't already know, you can find me online, um, Facebook or Instagram, Twitter as well. And on there, people message me, they ask me questions, they send me their photos. And then even in the comments section below, there's some pretty intense discussions that go on where I help people out solve their issues. And I love it. <laughs> And I usually make great friends out of it. So one of the questions that was actually posed to me was after the post for the powdery mildew video, and it was given to me by Sherry. And throughout the video, all credit goes to her photos and her video footage. So this is her garden. And she sent it to me to show me her mildew attack to make me feel better about my spaghetti squash mildew situation. But I immediately saw the photos and I thought, Oh my goodness, you have powdery mildew, Sherry, but you also have downy mildew. And I was so excited because I don't have it this year, so I can't actually show you any footage of my garden having it, having it but Sherry does. So today we were talking about downy mildew and exactly what it is, how it's different than powdery mildew, and how the treatment is uh, drastically different than the powdery mildew video. Be sure to say thank you to Sherry for lending her photos and video to this YouTube video, which will be shown. So thank you so much, Sherry. I appreciate it tons and tons and tons. And you guys, if you, you want me to help you with something or you have a question, do not hesitate to hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, or just even in the comment section below. I am more than happy to help you and we may even become friends. So what does Downy Mildew look like? Well, it usually is accompanied by powdery mildew, but not because they are the same thing. They're actually completely different. Downy mildew typically looks like yellow blotches or yellow spots on the leaf of different varieties of cucumbers, zucchinis, squash, basil, sunflowers. There's quite a few plants that this can attack. Peas, I think as well, but there's many different plants that it can attack and again, they are yellow kind of blotchy looking patches. And if you have these in accordance with powdery mildew, um, the yellow spots aren't from the powdery mildew, it's because you have two things happening at one time. And the reason why you have two things happening at the same time is just because the immune system, if you will, of the plant is suppressed already. Maybe you had downy first or maybe you had powdery first. Um, and they seem to coincide. They both show up at the same time of year as well. And we'll get into exactly why that is. 
Over time, what can happen in the case of basal especially is the lesions tend to grow. As the lesions grow, they end up turning kind of a blackish brown and that's what gives us the appearance that we've overwatered the plant. Maybe we think we've over fertilized um, or that it's going through transplant shock and that is not the case. It's actually the fungi itself attacking the leaf, making it look like you've overwatered, but you haven't. You have not overwatered. This is simply a sickness. I personally find it very prevalent in store bought basil. So, basil that you buy at the greenhouse, at the nursery, or in the big box stores, these typically do have, um, sometimes they do have the downy mildew already on it. You bring it home and it, it begins to progress as the season goes on. I actually lost a basil plant that I purchased from a nursery this year due to downy mildew um, very early on in, in the summer. It's very, very common and it, it coincides with you know, what would be transplant shock um, or inappropriate hardening off, but I do think it was carried by the nursery to your home more so than, you know, whatever. Uh, if you want to prevent this, I'd suggest starting basil from seed. So in my experience, every time I've gotten any basil plant from a greenhouse, nursery, big box store, it's eventually gotten downy mildew and it, it has collapsed on me. So what exactly is it? Well, it is a fungus, but it is a specific type of fungi called Omyces. So Omyces is a type of fungi that needs a host. It is technically considered an obligate parasite type fungi. So meaning it is has specific fungi uh, genus and species attacks certain plants. It is the same as the powdery mildew situation. Remember how certain fungi for the powdery mildew um, will attack certain plants? It's the same thing for the Omyces fungi that causes downy mildew. Now, that means same with powdery mildew is the reason why it's not spreading to the rest of your garden is because it's specifically just attacking the plants it is designed to attack. But this is what sets downy apart from powdery mildew. Dowdy mildew cannot overwinter at all. It Once it gets too cold, Downy is dead. She's gone. But what happens with Downy and what makes it so unique is that despite it having zero survival structures, it has the ability to move up and down North America. Kind of cool. Cool, but irritating. <laughs> So it actually starts every spring. It overwinters in the Gulf Coast. Lucky bugger. Can I overwinter in the Gulf Coast? Like, come on, someone adopt me. But it overwinters in the Gulf Coast. As the summer warms up, it begins to move its way up North America, kind of grabbing on to the species it can until it makes its way up into Canada. Kind of cool, right? Cool. So cool. It sucks but it's cool. So what Sherry has is basically a downy mildew that decided to vacation in the Gulf and then come bite her in the butt this summer. That is the reason why it takes so long to reach people in colder climates. The reason why you didn't see this in May and you're starting to see it just before fall, end of summer, is because that's how long it took to get to you via the backs of all the cucumber plants on the way to Sherry's house. And they love cold nights and prolonged periods of dew. And literally right now is the time for cold nights and dewy mornings that last forever. So perfect timing to be here in Canada. That is why downy mildew, uh, it can change the times that it shows up in your area. And maybe some years it just doesn't come at all. And it has to do with how quickly it was able to get up into your backyard. It spreads by the same means. Again, it's a fungi, so it's going to have very similar structures to what we spoke about in the last video about downy mildew, and I'm not gonna repeat those, so if you want to check out that science, be sure to check out the downy mildew video. But essentially, it's wind, it's animal movement, it's bugs, it's 
life. It's mother nature doing her job for us. So what exactly happens? Well, as you guys can tell, the canopy eventually collapses just because of the lack of chlorophyll and just the attack on that mesophyll area of the leaf, which is very integral to the survival of the plant. Once that canopy collapses, we obviously no longer have the power or the juice to be able to supply the growth of our fruits, which would be our cucumbers in Sherry's case. And eventually over time, it leads to root rot. Something unique about downy mildew um, compared to powdery mildew is that downy mildew will never move on to the petiole or the actual stem of the plant. It will only ever be located on the leaves. So you'll never see it on the stem or the petiole of the actual plant itself. How do you control it? This, this obligate parasite is incredibly nasty and it costs growers, vegetable farmers across North America so much moolah because of the damage it can do and just how hard it is to control. So controlling it is not easy. It is very difficult to do, but I'll give you some tips on how. Things like rototilling and removing the foliage. When I talked about the last video and downy mildew, when we talked about making sure that that foliage was not put into our compost or into our garden and we didn't allow it to overwinter in our yard, um, for powdery mildew, sorry. For downy mildew, it's a little bit different. Um, you can compost that foliage. You can leave that foliage on the ground. Um, and the reason being is because it, it simply doesn't have the survival structures to take on a Canadian or even uh, upper US winter. It just, it can't, simply cannot do it. Um, so that is not an issue. Uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to plant early. And Planting early isn't necessarily going to mean you're not going to have downy mildew, but what will happen is you will hopefully get your fruits off your crop before downy mildew kind of sets in and takes over. For spraying, um, Americans, you have quite a few better options. You have lots of different products on the market that you can utilize to help control the downy mildew. Uh, for Canadians, you have literally one <laughs> product that has been approved by Agriculture and Agri-Foods Canada, and that is Gavel. Is the Gavel, sorry, Gavel isn't the pesticide name. Gavel is the name of the company that makes that pesticide or that fungicide. So Gavel is the name for that if you want um, more of a chemical method of control. Because it is an obligate parasite fungi, there is no natural method of controlling this. Um, in my experience, things like rubbing alcohol, um, mouthwash, soap, um, none of that works on this, on this thing. So, uh, if you get it, start pruning right away, start pruning and start throwing those out, obviously get them away from the plant. Um, but yeah, other than that, there's no real... There's no means of controlling this in an organic way other than pruning. And then probably one of the most obvious ones is because they like the cooler nights and the dew, they're, they thrive on moisture. Um, another option you can use is trying not to wet the foliage, which kind of counteracts the whole how to get rid of down powdery mildew. Pruning, obviously, and just increasing the airflow around the plant um, and watering on kind of not wetting the foliage and watering just on the bottom uh, will help prevent it, help, help stop the spread of it. And then just uh, pruning in a way that allows for airflow. And Sherry's done a beautiful job of this. She has everything on trellises, there's nothing on the ground. Um, and it's just, it's just an unlucky year for you, uh, more so than anything, unfortunately. But you've done what you can, not much else you can do. Um, you can try pruning those leaves away, but again, it, uh, it's kind of one of those things where you just gotta cross your fingers and hope to golly gee, it's not going to take over. Um, it's not going to kill the plant before you can get some veg off of it. So unfortunately, that is the story of downy mildew. 
I want to thank Sherry so much for uh, sending me those photos and the great conversations we have had to date. I have another video for Sherry that I'm going to do, girl, but um, I'm probably going to do it during the winter time just because it's more applicable for like preparing for next year. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any video ideas, be sure to drop them in the comments below. I read all your comments like every single one of them and if you put video suggestions in there it literally it goes on the list so everything gets written down on a list and eventually I will do them because I do not exist without you guys and I want to thank you so freaking much because we are at 2.5 thousand subscribers which doesn't sound like a lot but I feel like our crew's like really tight knit and cool so yeah but I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you next time. Bye.